Tesla stock at the time of recording this video is down about 3% today. And here is why. The drop comes after news the electric vehicle maker sold 11,000 254 cars in the European Union last month, up about 3% year over year, according to the European Automobile Manufacturers Association. The EU April figure is an improvement. Through March, Tesla delivered about 66,000 vehicles, down about 5% from the previous year, which is actually better numbers than what we had last quarter when Tesla only delivered 387,000 cars, and that was down 9% on a year-over-year -year basis. I think this stock is selling off today because some people were optimistic that Tesla's deliveries were going to speed up again and accelerate. The problem is rates are high basically everywhere, okay? Especially in the US, in Europe, they're high as well. The European consumer is not as strong as the US consumer, so they're facing those problems as well over there, not to mention just higher rates. I want you to be prepared mentally for this. Tesla's deliveries are not going to improve materially until rates start to fall globally. So none of this really means anything because I already expected this. I'm sure you already expected this. Deliveries are not going to be great until rates fall. The truth of the matter is it's unaffordable to get a new car right now. But there is hope for better deliveries in 2024 than 2023. Elon Musk said he expects Tesla will deliver more cars in 2024 than the 1.8 million vehicles it sold in 2023 that will require faster growth in the second half of the year. Now that Tesla has seemingly adopted this strategy of buying down the interest rate to offer low interest rates on Tesla's, that seems to be boosting demand quite a bit. Not to mention, when rates actually start to fall, I believe we get the first cut here in the U.S. by July 31st. The markets are projecting the first cut for the EU coming in June. Well, that means maybe Tesla doesn't need to buy down the rate as much, and that could potentially help margins as well as deliveries. We are also waiting for NVIDIA earnings at the time of recording this video, and that's probably not having a positive effect on Tesla's stock as well today. There is a lot of uncertainty about Nvidia and what kind of effect that will have on our markets. And whenever there's uncertainty, that tends to negatively affect stocks. Tesla is not the only stock that's selling off today. In fact, you actually have about a half of 1% of all stocks selling off today, breaking under their 50 day moving average. That's not a very strong day. Looks like Whistling Diesel has taken delivery of his Cybertruck and this thing's about to get destroyed. But that will make for a pretty epic video. Tesla has introduced black 19-inch Gemini wheel covers for the Model Y in North America for $500. You can still choose the old silver ones if you want them. The new Model 3 Performance has officially received its EPA rating in the US. It gets 303 miles of EPA range, which is seven more miles of range than Tesla's original estimate of 296. Tesla has also reduced the price of the 19-inch Model 3 Nova wheels to $1,000 from $1,500 in the US. The hotel industry of Quant Santana Roo has installed the first Tesla battery in Cancun. A Tesla Megapack was installed, which stores solar energy to operate a 200-room hotel during peak hours of electricity demand. Volkswagen announced today it has delayed the launch of its all-electric ID7 sedan in the US and Canada, citing changing market conditions. Some of the steep US tariff increases on an array of Chinese imports, including electric vehicles and their batteries, computer chips, and medical products will take effect on August 1st, the U.S. Trade Representative's office said on Wednesday. A new Tesla supercharger is spotted under construction after mass employee layoff. 
Slowing EV uptake may delay Panasonic's EV battery expansion, said their CEO. Option activity today in Tesla's stock is quite negative. You have seen 20 orders from big money, totaling $9.05 million, with a positive order value of 11%. Volume, though, if you include retail investors, is more positive than negative. Really? kind of neutral volume on the call side 51.07 percent volume on the put side of 48.93 percent short interest of free float is sitting at 3.88 percent short sellers took a beating yesterday losing about 1.3 billion dollars now you have about 20.07 billion currently in short positions which if you factor in today's drop of about six dollars per share that would be about 19.5 billion so shorts are still down about 700 million dollars in the last two days based on what we seen yesterday even factoring in today's drop so shorts are still not in the greatest position and i do think if nvidia has good earnings then well I could put them in an even worse spot. You have 107.58 million shares that are currently sold short. Cost to borrow fees today are sitting at about a half of 1%, which just means there's not a lot of shorting activity actually taking place today. But I have to tell you, I am a little concerned because, I mean, NVIDIA has rallied a lot in a short amount of time. You've rallied about $200 per share since late April, mid to late April. Heading into earnings, I think you've priced in all of what NVIDIA is going to do, right? From earnings. I, th I think you've priced in a good earnings. And that means NVIDIA could actually fall after earnings. That would be, I think, the most... Um, easy kind of conclusion although nvidia has shocked us in the past but they're really gonna have to shock us this time to get the stock to move higher but as long as nvidia does not miss on earnings it should be a positive catalyst for broadening out our markets to get a more inclusive broad market rally going because after all we don't have many catalysts left for stocks for the next couple of weeks yes we did have the fed minutes today they came out at 2 p.m they don't tend to move the markets longer term of course you can get knee-jerk reactions off of that but it doesn't tend to actually be a longer term catalyst we do have durable goods orders coming out on friday that can be important as it can judge the state of the consumer and how much the consumer is actually spending money but Given we're going to have NVIDIA today, I think that's what the markets are going to be focused on, even heading into Friday. For an example, if NVIDIA has bad earnings and misses and stocks sell off, I don't think a good durable goods orders number is going to save the markets. Vice versa, if markets rally after NVIDIA today, then I, I, I don't think a bad number is going to hurt the markets too much coming Friday, for durable goods orders at least. Here today, you do have the Russell 2000 underperforming again, down about 0.3%. The NASDAQ slightly in the green, up 0.06%. S&P is down 0.06%. And the Dow is down almost two-tenths of 1%. Take a look over here at the VIX. The VIX is up about 2.5% today, which just shows that there are some people that are going out and buying protection put protection on the S&P 500 that may be worried about Nvidia earnings. Target reported earnings this morning. That stock is down about seven and a half percent as consumers buy fewer groceries and home goods. CEO Brian Cornell said the results show continued soft trends in discretionary categories. So a little bit of bad news about the consumer is definitely showing today. We do have other earnings today as well in After Hours, obviously NVIDIA, Snowflake, ALF, Synopsis, and a couple others. Tomorrow pre-market, you have Ralph Lauren, TD Bank, Polestar, and others. And then in After Hours tomorrow, you have Decker's Brands, Intuit, Ross, and Workday. 
CNN's fear and greed index is moving lower one point today from 62 yesterday down to 61 today. Market momentum is greed, stock price strength fear, stock price breadth is greed, put and call options is extreme greed, market volatility is neutral, safe haven demand is greed, and junk bond demand is fear. Here on the day today, 10-year treasury yields are doing pretty much nothing, and the markets are still assigning about a 2% chance the Fed actually raises rates on June 12th and a 98.5% chance that the Fed just holds policy where it is. I believe July 31st is really the Fed meeting to be watching. I think this is the meeting that we will likely get the first cut. We're going to have two CPI reports by now or by then. You're going to have two sets of basically all of your data besides GDP. And I think that will solidify the first cut coming July 31st, as Goldman Sachs also believes. Currently, there's an 18.3% chance of a cut Ju July 31st, 80.4% chance of a pause, and 1.3% chance of a rate hike. As you do start to see, as I believe we will see, the odds of a cut rise that should help support stocks. Markets, though, are still pricing in the first cut coming September 18th, 49.3% chance of a cut and 40.9% chance of a continued pause. Tom Lee over on X six minutes ago reshared this post from Reuters that says UK inflation fell by less than expected in April. Consumer prices rose by an annual 2.3%, down sharply from a 3.2% rise the month before. Tom Lee says 2.3% inflation is on target and is coming to the USA. Tom Lee also shared this post, which I think you guys should also see, that says supply is coming. These are the last 12 months of homes that were built. You can see Dallas, about 20,000, Phoenix, 17,000, New York, 10,500, Austin, 17,000, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on and on. But look at the units under construction here in Orange. There is a lot more units under construction than were actually built in the last 12 months. So as more supply comes, that should really help bring down that housing inflation. Google Trends data for today is ticking down slightly for the Cybertruck from 71 down to 69. The Model Y going from 44 to 40, the Model 3 going from 25 to 23, the Model S and the Model X staying unchanged. These are still very strong levels of Google Trends data and overall search interest into Tesla, which is very unnormal, unnatural during this period in time. Like this time of the year, is not when you expect to see Google Trends data exploding for Tesla, which if there's anything that suggests Q2 could be strong, it's probably this. Over on stock twits today for Tesla, sentiment is neutral, the same as it was yesterday at 50. Today, the message volume is extremely high at 75, a lot higher than yesterday's normal of 52, and the participation ratio today is at 55, which is mainly in line with where you have been recently. Google Trends data for full self-driving is back down to 25, which is not a low. You did hit that low May 5th through the 11th, so you are trending higher than you were before, which shows continued interest into full self-driving by Tesla customers. Tesla stock today is falling back to this trend line, which was our previous level of resistance. Looks like it's serving as support today. If we could hold that level, as long as Nvidia doesn't come out super bad today or sell off large, right? Then you can probably hold this as support and then actually find your way back to that 100 day moving average at $186. 53 cents in the not so distant future if you get above that level and above the 188 level then you make a run to about 200 and then above 200 it gets even crazier from there so we'll have to see what happens with nvidia it can and likely will be a huge catalyst for tesla stock Tesla's RSI is at 54.66, and Tesla's MACD continues to get stronger. But I will have a more in-depth 
technical breakdown in the next video, so stay tuned to the channel for that one. With that said, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you made it to the end of this video, and if you guys want to take it a step further, come trade with us live in real time. Check out that link down below in the description of this video. You will get notified every time I make trades or if there is news that comes out that you need to know. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.